How is it going, everybody? You're watching the Naval Tech. Today, we're going to talk about the main differences between the eSIM, the embedded SIM that became really popular, especially because of the iPhone 14 series, right? And your typical, normal, physical SIM that we all know and love for so many years. So, this topic is kind of a mess, it is extremely confusing. Everybody has questions about the differences between those two types of SIMs. So, in this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know. So I'm going to compare both the SIM to the eSIM and of course I'm going to tell you if there's difference in connectivity, about security, about battery consumption and much much more including how to activate, transfer between devices. So I'm going to tell you a complete guide on everything you need to know. Let's get started. Okay, so first things first, I gotta tell you what an eSIM is. So as I mentioned, eSIM stands for embedded SIM. So it means that you don't have to pick a physical SIM and put in your phone because you have a chip embedded, hence the name. And with this technology, you can actually use this chip to download SIM profiles and use multiple SIMs on your phone without actually having to put anything in. So that's how the technology works. Now talking about the iPhone specifically, you can store up to eight eSIMs on your iPhone, but please keep in mind that you can only use two at the same time. So we can use two simultaneously and have up to six like dormant, like in standby for when you want to use it. So that's very, very cool. And also keep in mind that you can use eSIMs on iPhones starting on the iPhone XR and newer. So this technology has been around for many, many years now. Okay, so now that you understand the concept of an eSIM, how it works and what it is, if you wanna actually learn how to set up an eSIM on your iPhone, I have a video here on the channel, I'll leave a card right here so you can go ahead and check it out, the process step-by-step step of setting it up, okay? This video is more like an explanation, okay? So let's move on and let's talk about the main differences between the eSIM and your typical physical SIM. So first things first, there's no difference in connection. Many people have this question, they think that an eSIM gets you faster connection with your 4G, your 5G, whatever. No, it's the exact same thing. Same thing with battery usage. Many people think that using an eSIM will actually drain your battery faster and that's just a myth. There's no difference between using your physical SIM and using an eSIM when we're talking about battery life, battery usage as a whole. But, and this is very important, battery usage is exactly the same if we're comparing one physical SIM to one eSIM, okay? So one versus one. So then battery usage is exactly the same. But if we're actually using two eSIMs, so if we're using two accounts at the same time, two networks at the same time, naturally battery usage will be greater on the eSIM side, but not because of the eSIM, but because you're using two instead of one. Another very nice thing about the eSIM is that you don't have to replace your SIM. You don't have to replace your little card if it breaks or if, for example, it falls on the ground, if it has some physical damage or something like that, because your eSIM, it's embedded. So it's here inside, so you'll never have this problem of having to replace the actual SIM. So this is a good thing. Another advantage of the eSIM is that the process of activation is very, very fast. So if you actually want to sign up for a new carrier, a new plan, a new number or whatever, uh, you just go ahead, sign up, you get the QR code from the carrier and then automatically and instantly you do the setup process on your phone and then it's working. So you don't have to go somewhere and pick up the actual SIM or anything like that. So the process of activation is instant. As long as you have the code, you can start using immediately. But then that's when problems actually begin because it's not all flowers. We have some problems with eSIM related not to the technology itself, but with carriers. So depending on where you're watching this video in the world, your country or region, maybe your carrier is just not ready. And then doing things like, as I just mentioned, like activating your account, 
sometimes it's extremely hard. Uh, sometimes you can't do it online from your phone or from a computer. You have to actually go to the physical store and actually pay a fee and actually get the QR code. So it's not as easy as doing the process online. Uh, same thing happens if you actually want to uh, transfer your eSIM from one iPhone to another. In theory, you can do this process at home. You can just transfer eSIM from one to another if you buy a new phone or whatever, but some carriers again have problems with this and they won't let you actually enable uh, the eSIM enable the account uh, from home you have to actually go to a physical store or phone them and get the QR code on the email so it's a mess same story if you actually need to reset your iPhone or your iPhone has a problem and you just can't turn it on and you actually have to force reset it it happens so often and then when your iPhone reboots you have no eSIM and then same problem because you have to contact your carrier and sometimes it's not easy. So uh, the technology is here, the technology is great, but it feels like it's not there yet for the whole ecosystem, okay, for the whole logistics of the thing. Because it's not just the technology, it's not, it's not just the iPhone or your Android phone, it's actually the whole thing, the whole ecosystem, as I mentioned, the carriers, the companies, everybody has to have this 100% working in order for eSIM to actually be perfect. And I just talked about Android, right? Well, it's a mess if you wanna transfer your eSIM from your Android phone to your iPhone, it's not as easy as just removing the SIM card from the old phone and putting it on the new one. So think about that. Uh, we are in 2023, as I mentioned, many, many years since this technology was implemented on all phones, but still, depending on our carrier, depending on where you are, it's still a mess. So in my opinion, if you still have a physical SIM and if your phone supports a physical SIM, keep using it. I wouldn't just go ahead and uh, transfer and convert my typical physical SIM to an eSIM just yet. If you can, keep using it, no problem. Wait for the technology and this whole thing get matured enough. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video as usual, guys. Bye-bye.